Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. All of us have encountered this, particularly wildlife photographers. We have a great subject in a great scene. The lighting is good, but our lens isn't quite long enough to present the subject the way we want to in the scene. For example, I have this image of a great blue heron. It's a great subject. The scene is excellent. The lighting is good, but my lens wasn't quite long enough for me to get in tighter on that heron like I would have liked to. Now, of course, in post-production, I could crop this. Unfortunately, when you crop an image, you lose resolution. Now, there are applications available that will allow you to increase resolution. One excellent app is Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI. Unfortunately, not everyone owns Gigapixel AI and not everyone wants to own Gigapixel AI. They subscribe to Adobe's Creative Cloud, and for 99% of what they do, Creative Cloud is fine. Well, what about that 1%? What if they have an image that they need to crop? Is there anything they could do to increase the resolution? Well, yes. Photoshop has a feature called Super Zoom. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Super Zoom in Photoshop. Now, as you can see, I have the image opened up into Camera Raw. It is an unedited RAW file. I'm going to be show you, showing you my workflow for uh, using Super Zoom in Photoshop only. If you're a Lightroom user, what I do in Camera Raw, you would do in Lightroom. Then when I'm done in Camera Raw, I'm going to open up the image into Photoshop. When you're done in Lightroom, open up the image into Photoshop, and from that point forward, we'll do the exact same thing. I mentioned that this is an unedited RAW file. Typically, I like to crop early in my workflow. If you're going to be using Super Zoom, you don't want to crop the image at all because Super Zoom is going to do that for you. So we're not going to crop the image. The next thing I like to do that I do early in my workflow is noise reduction. Now, this image, as you can see over here in the top right, it has ISO 100. So I don't think there's really significant noise in this image. But if there were, I would go to the Detail tab is right here and I would hope that the denoise button is active. If it, is, if it is, I would use that, that AI denoise. If it isn't, I would use manual noise reduction. Now in this case, I don't think I need to do any of that because um, as I mentioned, it was shot at ISO 100. The next thing I would do is some tone adjustments. So I'll go to basic and I am going to zoom in. I'm just going to click and zoom in and drag around. Now, oh, by the way, if you do have any of these tools on the right hand side or controls on the right hand side open, uh, you'll just have a magnifier so you can zoom in and out. If you want to drag around, hold in the space bar on your keyboard and you'll get a hand tool and you could drag around. So I just want to see the subject. I want to see the great blue heron. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do what I typically would do is I'll bring highlights down. I'll open up shadows quite a bit. Lights down a little more. I'll get a white point, hold the option key on my Mac. It's all key on a PC until I see some white coming through and back it off. Same thing for blacks. I'm really just concerned about the subject. I'm not concerned about the background that much. I don't care if it goes too dark back there. I think that though is a little bit too dark overall. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm not going to do anything with texture or clarity, nothing with vibrance or saturation. And you may have noticed when I was in the detail tab that sharpening was at zero. So I'm not going to do any sharpening either. When you use um, Super Zoom, it supposedly will sharpen the image a little bit. So I'm going to do all of that after I use Super Zoom. And I'll add, if I think it needs any vibrance or saturation, I'll do that at the end as well. So I'm not going to do that right now. Now, again, if you're in Photoshop, just basically do tone adjustments and noise reduction if it needs it. Then do what I'm going to do now, open it up into uh, Photoshop. So I'll click and open this in Photoshop. Now, we're in Photoshop. Now... Super Zoom is a neural filter. And by the way, I'm going to be one of the instructors on the um, Photoshop Virtual Summit. I think it's Virtual Summit 5. And I'm going to be two, doing two different classes. And one of them, I'll be covering all the neural filters that are in Photoshop. Of course, Super Zoom I mentioned is one of those neural filters. And I'm also going to be doing a class on focus stacking. Um, I'll have information about the virtual summit. It's free, by the way, in the description below this video. All right, I'm going to use Super Zoom. So I'm going to go up to Filter, 
and then I'm going to go down to neural filters. You can say, oh no, neural filters is grayed out. Well, if it is grayed out, just come over here where it says background and just click that padlock to unlock it. Then go up to filter and then neural filters. Then you'll open up and you'll see there's a number of different neural filters. And of course, my class that I'll be doing for the Photoshop Virtual Summit will cover all the virtual filters, but we're just going to be talking about super zoom. So we're going to turn that on. And when you turn it on, you'll notice that you have this little um, preview window. This is where you look at how you want it cropped, basically. And the way you would do that is you would click the little plus magnifier. Now, when you click it, you're going to say it's not zooming in. Why isn't it zooming in? Well, that's because for some reason, this output is always set to new document. And when you're on new document, it won't show you how you're zooming in. So uh, what you want to do then is go to new layer. Now, there is a reason for that. I probably should explain. If you did crop already, you would go to new document. So you're already cropped. So it's not going to show you a cropped image as you click that plus magnifier. Since I didn't crop yet, we go to new layer. And now every time I click this, I'm zoomed in. I'm going to zoom in three times. Then you just click and drag it the way you want it to be. Now you'll see that you could enhance image details. That's why I didn't add any sharpening uh, to the image. Also, if this were a JPEG, it's a raw file. You could remove JPEG artifacts. I don't have to worry about that. Now, if there was noise in the image that you didn't already remove, you could reduce noise reduction. Now, I didn't do any noise reduction, so I will, I'll just pull that up. Now, this is kind of hit and miss. You don't really get a preview of what you're doing here. So I'm just going to push that up nominally like to, you know, 11, 12. And sharpening too, I'll just push that up nominally to like 11. You may not want to do either of these, uh, at, you know, put anything there because you could do it later. And when you do it later, you'll be able to see it. Right now, I can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to do it uh, for demonstration purposes so you could see what it, you know might be happening. Now, if there was a person in this image, I could click and enhance face details because often if you're zooming in tight on a person, let's say that's in the background of an image, their face is going to be blurry and lack detail. And you could help enhance those details by clicking there. Now, throughout all of this, you may have noticed down here, very small, it says processing on device. That resets every time I move a slider or I zoom in or out, or I drag the image around. So that's going to reset. Now you can see right now it says four minutes. So this does take some time. Now my computer is very fast. So super zoom might not be something you could use if you have an older computer, because if you have an older computer, I would imagine that this could take a day. I mean, it could take a really long time. So what I'm going to do now, since I have it set the way I want, I have it zoomed in the way I want, I have the noise reduction sharpen sliders the way I want, I have this checkbox checked, I'm just going to let it do its thing, I'll stop the video, and then I'll restart the video when it is done. Okay, it finally finished, and now all you need to do is click OK, and when you do, it will open the image up into Photoshop. Now you could continue you're editing from this point. If you're using Lightroom, just save this, return to Lightroom, and you could continue your editing in Lightroom. If you are staying in Photoshop, there's some things you need to be aware of. For example, let's say now, okay, it looks pretty good, but I want to go into Camera Raw and I want to like sharpen the subject and use a sub subject mask and stuff like that. Well, if you go up and you go to Filter and you go down to Camera Raw Filter, what you'll find is when it opens up into Camera Raw that it won't be cropped. <laughs> and um, that's kind of weird, right? It is kind of weird. Um, and if you open up the crop tool, you'll notice that there's no nothing there. I mean, it's just kind of weird. So what you'll need to do, uh, what I recommend you do, first of all, you don't need the bottom layer. See the bottom layer is the uncropped image. Take that and just throw that right in the, oops, don't do that. Take that and just throw that right in the garbage. Now we have this layer, go to the crop tool. And when you go to the crop tool, just like you could touch up your crop, let's say, just come in and just like, see how now it's showing everything. Just move something a little bit, like the bottom up. And then right here, just say, make sure it says delete crop pixels. Make sure that is checked. You're on transparent default and click the check mark. Now, when you go up to camera raw, you'll see that we have the actual image cropped the way it was. 
Now, if you are a Lightroom user, you won't encounter this. You could just start editing it in Lightroom and use subject masks and everything else. Now, um, for this uh, um, specific problem here, or specific image, I should say, I'm just going to go to masking right away and I'm going to do a subject mask. I like the subject it did. I'm going to add some texture. We're going to add some sh um, some sharp, a lot of sharpness to it. You know, it looks pretty good. Uh, background's kind of bothering me. Um, it's a little bit too, like, saturated green. So I'm going to uh, use a background mask and I'm going to go to color and I'm going to go to saturation. I'm just going to pull some saturation out of the background. And let's call that a day. We'll call that done. So we'll click OK. So there is our image. Now you can see it really did a nice job, um, you know, cropping in and preserving detail or enhancing the detail a little bit. It did a good job. It's a little quirky the way it works. Um, in my opinion, I think Adobe could improve that, make it a little more user friendly and maybe make it work a little faster. So um, that's super zoom in Photoshop. Again, I'll be teaching all the neural filters in the um, Photoshop Virtual Summit 5. And I'll have information about that in the description below this video. And again, um, it's free. So check that out. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.